Today is International Day of the Girl Child, the day observed annually on the 11th of October is a global platform to advocate for full spectrum of girls' rights. This year's flagship event will explore opportunities for improving resources to girls and tackling issues that affect them. From maternal health care to parental support for adolescent mothers, experts are calling for attention to the girl child. Other areas of focus include digital and life skills training, comprehensive sexual education, violence prevention, among others. The global community is being tasked to move beyond reaffirming commitments to investing boldly in the action needed to make a change. I'm joined now by gender advocate Tessie Biobaku for more on this development. Happy International Girls Child, Girl Child's Day to you. Thank you. <laughs> it's the first time I've seen it in person, so I'm quite excited. Yeah. The amazing thing about yeah. this observance is that, personally, I think that we've experienced some appreciable improvement yeah, in the attention yeah. on the girl child. Do yes. you agree? I do agree because um, right now we're looking at a society where gender equality is really being embraced as opposed to inequality before. We're looking at a society where we can't say we're going to eradicate violence, but to an extent it's being reduced. Indeed. We're looking at a society where as opposed to the silence culture, we're looking at the voicing out, empowering, amplifying of voice mm. of the girl child. Indeed. I'm just wondering what you think are the biggest challenges as we speak right now. We know we're still battling with a high number of out-of-school children. Yep. Uh, what, would you, what would you say are the biggest challenges for, you know, girls in Nigeria? I would say, um, let's look at the society. We'll bring everything back to the home. Um, like they say, charity begins at home. Um, looking at early child marriage, which is one of the concerns I have with regards to the girl child being empowered. Mm. Now, you know the girl child is that child that will grow up to become that woman that will be the one that will nurture the children at home and all that. So we need to know how we can get these things that are like negative vices in the life of the girl child, we need to see how we can reduce it. Having a girl child being married off early does not make that girl child, except probably intentionally as the child grows up, which is most time not, um, is not always the, 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 what happens, you know, because along the line when you, as a girl child, when you take in, you have the children, you don't get to sometimes improve yourself except you are intentional. Then you look at education. Education now you see that one out of four children, one out of four girl child now, they don't complete their lower secondary school education. Why report has that four out of eight girl child or four out of ten don't complete the secondary school, the senior secondary school education. Mm. Now if you don't have an educated girl child, becomes that bold child, becomes that empowered girl child that can amplify her voice where when she sees what is wrong, she says it, and see what she can do to stand in the gap. If you have an inclusiveness of the girl child, you're talking about a society where you have the girl child being in leadership tomorrow, you're not saying that, you know, the girl child would now be, you know, in quotes, mm. in the other room. A girl child becomes that child that, you know that tomorrow you can stand in places where your the boy child can also be. You stand there and you can you can be of importance, though you are already. But for you to have that dignity, the girl child needs to have the safety, the enabling environment for her to grow. And if you have the girl child, the growth of the girl child definitely will have will help the society. You talked about marrying girls off at a very young age. Yes. Uh, that has a cultural and traditional, even religious dimension to it. How do you think we are? Are, are we making progress in that? Regard? I think we are. Because that's why we still, I'll come back to the silence culture now, mm. being, not being the norm. There's that voice. People are saying, may, when we see things like maybe a 12-year-old being married off to a 50-year-old, a 70-year-old. Now people are saying, no, this is wrong. Mm. No, we, we need to now have this inclusiveness with regards to community understanding. Let people understand that. It's not as if you're saying 
yes, in terms of religion, I can get away with this. Yeah. But we're saying the effect this have even on the girl child. Again, there's something that has been silenced with regards to the girl child upbringing. Mm. We need to also look into bringing up responsible boy child. Because in that, we're able to bridge that gap. Because we're talking about the girl child so much, it sounds, sounds like we're ignoring the boys. Yes. We need to create that equity at home. Where you don't say, okay, this, um, this responsibility is only for the girl child. Or it's not for the boy child. When we're able to bridge this gap. The society is better for it. How well are we doing with the Child Rights Act in Nigeria? The right to dignity and freedom uh, from discrimination and even right to education? Ah, uh, well, okay, let me say we're doing a bit okay, but we could do better. Mm. We could do a bit better in making sure that we are more intentional. Um, the government should be able to provide a safe environment for the girl child the government should be able to provide a safe environment and also support for NGOs that are there to take care of, to be there to create awareness, to give the necessary tools to help the girl child navigate through life. Uh, the, there are concerns about how hard we are on you know, violence against the girl child, particularly in the area of rape you know, and harassment. Um, some states are doing quite well. With, um, I, I think it, it, it state goes to the extent of publishing, you know, even the names and pictures of those who, who have, uh, you know, been indicted. What more efforts can be put in place? Because this is an area where you can completely destroy life and render an individual useless with the way the community approaches it. You know, um, it's, it's sad that um, a girl child is raped more by, you know, um, you have a society that there's a lot of dysfunctionality. Um, but basically, the rape, victim, the rape girl child becomes the one that looks as if it's being stigmatized. Why the boy child is being seen as in, oh, um, more like the victim. When a girl child is raped or molested, it's like you've raped his soul. Mm. And that girl child relieves that event, that experience, over and over into adulthood. Yes, it's, to an extent, things have been done, things have been put in place, but people go, going through that suffering, I mean, the consequences of those actions, I don't think there's been enough um, measures in place to take care of that. Um, in terms of how many people have, been, have we heard that today are in prison, or maybe um, you kill some, you rape a girl child. You don't just rape her, you kill her. How many people have been said, okay, we're going to maybe send this person to death or something? You know, you must get to that point where people know that, look, if I commit this act, I'm going to suffer the consequences. Mm. When that is put in place, a lot of things would take a different dimension. Some states have come up with um, sex offenders register. But what more measures do you think um, can be put in place beyond, you know, the, the, uh, the, the punishment which comes after the offense has been committed? What are those things can be done, you know, to avoid it in the first place? Well, like I earlier said, charity begins at home. Train your boy child to be responsible. Guide your girl child to know that there are certain things that... Unfortunately for the girl child, um, right from birth, she's like at a disadvantage. Yeah. Um, I was in a uh, program some years back where a girl child, we were to give as, you know, the, the team for this year talks about, you know, the girl child's rights, talks about well-being, being in place, even makes me, because that well-being, as, as small as the menstrual part, might look as if it's nothing. Some girl child have to go through some things. The girl had told me how the mother would tell her to go and meet somebody where she had to sleep with the person to give her money or something, or had to buy even a pad. So even if it's to make some things, because the girl child, naturally you like it or not, as a girl child growing up, you must go through having your uh, menstrual cycle and all that. And it's necessary. Why can't we have 
free menstrual pads right. for the girl child. At least we have given out free condoms. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> gender advocate Tessie Bubako, thank you for talking to us. Nice meeting you, Mr. Kali. Thank you. Uh, that's Stevenson News uh, this hour for more updates on the stories we're monitoring. You can visit our website at stevensonnews.tv. You can also follow us on all of our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram, and X at Stevenson News. And you are live on YouTube at Stevenson News Nigeria. Thank you for watching. <laughs>